Welcome to War Games on Toast, all of you lovely people. I am once again back talking about the latest edition of Warcry, and I am once again back talking about warbands. The last time we took a step back in time and looked at one of the older warbands, but today we are looking forward. Today we are looking at one of the sets that came out thanks to Bloodhunt, and of course we are looking at the spooky vampires, the Askurgan Trueblades. But before we get into all that, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button. Your support helps the channel fight the demonic YouTube algorithmic demon, and my god, is this guy a hefty bloke. I try to improve on every video, so if you see something that could be improved upon, let me know, because that does nothing but help me make the channel and my content better. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. And as per usual, we start with story time, which is my personal favourite time in all of my videos. So grab a blanket, grab some hot chocolate, put a few marshmallows in there, you know, that's on me, okay? And let, let's have some story time. So who are the Askurgan Trueblades? All vampires must consume blood to survive, but not all are willing to surrender to the bestial nature of their curse. The Askurgan Trueblades are an order of undead warrior monks who pride themselves on their ability to restrain their monstrous instincts, although not all pass this gruelling test. So that little excerpt there comes directly from the Predator and Prey book that comes with Bloodhunt, and I thought it fit these guys perfectly. And with story time out of the way, let's move on to stats. Now normally I would talk about abilities, but several people have pointed out that the natural order of things is actually checking out the stats first. So that's what we're doing, we're trying things a little bit different. This is the core of the warband, the numerical foundation that helps mould everything else. So let's check them out, and we're going to start with the Askurgan Exemplar. So I went into this set pretty blind, pretty blind when I first started playing. I assumed that vampires would be faster and the hounds would be stronger. That is not the case at all. These guys are way stronger physically and funnily enough, they are just as fast. The exemplar exemplifies this the most. Defensively, the guy's fine. He's a smidge on the expensive side for his defensive stats, you know, having toughness 4 and 20 wounds but movement 5 is very, very nice. And again, those other stats all lean on that sort of like side of average. His offensive stats. My god, these are outstanding. With a few notable downsides. Firstly, strength 6. Strength 6, 4, 6 damage is one hell of a profile. This guy hits reliably and he hits very, very hard. Per swing, this guy averages around about 9 damage at anything below toughness 6, which is very impressive. Standing still, we are looking at about 18 damage without any other buffs. That's enough to execute some seriously elite models and puts most leaders into the danger zone or, you know, in the grave with a good enough spike. Pop something like Onslaught on this guy and revel in the catastrophic levels of carnage, taking something like 12 damage per action. Absolutely crazy. Love this guy. The downsides though, range 1 and only 3 attacks. Sure, with a damage profile like that, the attacks don't matter that much, but it is worth mentioning, range 1 hurts way more but due to movement 5, it doesn't actually hurt as much as you might think in the grand scheme. Then we have the Askurgan Pariah, and the Pariah is pretty darn interesting. We'll get into specifically why when we touch on abilities, but do be sure to note that he is far more than his stats, and his stats are pretty darn funky in not the best way. Defensively, he has movement 5, toughness 3, wounds 18, and rolls in at 105 points. This makes him, I think, the cheapest 18 wound model in the entire game. The downside is that toughness 3, but he has a lot of wounds to kind of cushion any throwaway damage he would take, and movement 5 helps him keep mobile too, which is always nice. 
it's an okay line. I would even say it, it leans almost on the side of solid. And surprisingly, his offensive stats are also surprisingly competent, although not good enough to make him a dedicated fighter. We're talking range 1, attacks 2, strength 5, 2 5 damage, which is solid enough. It's solid enough. Throw on some buffs and he can hold his own in a scrap, but anything remotely killy will punish the pariah pretty darn heavily in combat. That's, so that's, that's worth bearing in mind there. But with the prior out of the way, let's go on to the, the coolest model in this warband, and that is the Curse Blood. The Curse Blood is a lot of fun. This guy moves fast and can take a beating and isn't that expensive, all things considered. This guy is 25 wounds, toughness 4. And that is really a highlight here. Uh, that is a lot of bulk on a model that's only 190 points. Offensively, the Curse Blood is very nice too. Range 1, attacks 4, strength 5, 2 4 damage. The damage profile itself is a little bit on the low side, but attacks 4 and strength 5 are excellent. And again, the ranged 1 isn't that much of a factor when you consider this thing is movement 6. This thing deals a hefty amount of damage against average toughness units and can reliably cut down frontline fighters within two actions. This makes the Curse Blood very solid at tying up chaff and then killing them thanks to his great offensive stats and his hefty bulk. The Curse Blood is a beast however which does hold it back in certain objective games but that's a small price to pay for a pretty great model. It has a job and it does it very well. And now we go on to the more basic stuff, and this is the Eskurgan Ascetics. And these come in two flavours, the Charnel Mace and the Howling Glaive. Defensively, they are identical, however. Movement 5, Toughness 4, 15 wounds, 115 points. This is... this is really good. That profile is excellent. The Movement 5 is wonderful that's that's above average the toughness is average and the wounds are i would say above average for a model of this price this is above par in every way <laughs> this is a really solid defensive line with a cracking movement stat and offensively they are a little bit odd so the channel mace is range one attacks two strength six three four damage Whilst the Howling Glaive has range 2, attacks 2, strength 5, 2, 5 damage. Right off the bat, the Glaive looks interesting because of that higher crit and extra range. However, the Glaive sacrifices a lot for that advantage. Namely, the drop in minimum damage and strength. This limits its effectiveness against more elite enemies and when you grind the numbers, the channel mace comes out on top in every single scenario. Sure, you lose that range, but you have movement makeup for that. And the damage increase is very nice. Neither of these models get many attacks, so you want to hit hard and reliably, and the mace does that. Do bear in mind, there are abilities that might tip the balance here a little bit, but we'll get into that a bit later on. And then finally, we have the Eskurgan Acolytes. And these are another double entry. And this one surprised me a fair bit when I did the number crunches. But first things first, these come with the Throat Taker, a Flail, or the Bone Chain Falchion, a really big sword. Defensively, they are, as expected, identical. Movement 5, Toughness 3, 12 wounds and they come in for 90 points. This isn't bad. Uh, they have a higher than average movement in wounds but their toughness is noticeably lower than what is expected at this price range. Offensively they are interesting too. The throat taker comes with range 3, attacks 3, strength 4, 1, 4 damage and the falchion on the other hand is range 1, attacks 2, strength 5, 2, 5 damage. At first, I assumed the Falchion would be the better damaging choice. Higher strength, more damage, and more crit. But when I did the maths, turns out, it turns out that, attack, that extra attack on the Throat Taker really pushes that weapon to comparable level of power against all targets. This begs the question, is the negligible difference in damage numbers uh, that favours the Falchion worth losing range 3. 
And I would say no. The throat take at coming in with range 3 is way too good in my opinion. You get comparable damage at a safe distance. It's simply too good to pass up and it helps make up for the lower toughness of the Acolyte. I say this every time, but range 3 weapons are fairly uncommon. So if you stand on the edge of your range and swing, most counter swings will require enemies to move closer to attack. This functionally halves their damage output for that battle round, making the Throat Taker not only a comparable offensive weapon, but also a much better defensive pick. Overall, the Skurgan True Blades are a really interesting bag of tricks. Your guys are rocking great strength and damage numbers, but their attacks are a little bit on the low end. This harms their damage output quite substantially, and most units in the Warband will struggle to kill chaff in one battle round on average. This is where abilities come in, and these should help you bump those numbers and do work on the tabletop. Stats are only half the story after all. And as per usual, we start with our reaction, and that is called Lofty Disdain, and this can be used by everyone. A fighter can make this action when they are targeted by a melee attack, but before hit rules are made. Add one to the toughness characteristic during that attack action. Now this is a really spicy reaction. This makes up for the defensively squishy nature of your faction. Half your faction is rocking toughness 3, which is below average, and the other half are dead on the average of 4. This reaction can drastically change the outcome of a battle if you bump your toughness to match or beat your opponent's strength. This is especially good on your acolytes who are your chaff who don't really do enough damage that can easily burn the AP to stay alive that extra turn. But frankly everything in this faction can benefit from this in a pinch. It's a very very nice reaction and I like this a lot. Onto our abilities and we have our first double, Moment of Savagery, and this can be used by everyone and the text reads, a fighter can only use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. This fighter makes a bonus move or a bonus attack action. This is a very very common ability that actually appears twice in Blood Hunt. <laughs> Both this faction and the Claws of Karnak have access to this double, and frankly, it's a really strong double. It can be used by everyone, but is especially effective on your Ascetics, Curse Blood, and your Exemplar, with the Exemplar being the big winner here, as not only can the Exemplar reliably kill things due to their outstanding stats, but also would love an opportunity to move away or kill something else. We are talking about an average of around 27 damage if you get 3 swings at an opponent with toughness 5 or below, which for the record is most things. And then our next double is called Beast Familiar, and this can only be used by the Askurgan Pariah. It reads, pick an enemy fighter within 20 inches of this fighter until the end of the battle round that fighter cannot make disengage actions. This is the reason you take the pariah. If you recall, the pariah was pretty darn underwhelming when it came to stats. He was interesting, but that didn't equate to being a useful combatant on the tabletop. This right here makes up for it. The range is huge. It has zero RNG. The effect can be game changing. People like to disengage. Disengaging lets you run away to heal, it lets you move important models to important locations, and it helps enemies get around chaff blocks. Well now, you can prevent that 100% of the time. If there is a model you want locked down, throw chaff at it, then use this ability, and they are stuck until that chaff block is killed. This is very strong in the right circumstances, and this combined with your faction's innately high movement can be devastating. This can be especially good at locking down people who are holding treasure, for example. Very, very nice. And then our final double is Terrifying Howl, and this can only be used by the Curse Blood. It reads, until the end of the battle round, enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter cannot make reactions. This is another very interesting double, and this time it can only be used by the Curse Blood. The ability to shut off reactions can be very handy, 
especially against things the Cursed Blood wants to kill. Chaff are notorious for using counter or counter adjacent reactions. Look at the Rotmire Creed or the Signs of Flame, for example. Heck, even damage reduction abilities can take their toll on your damage output. Well, none of that applies when the Cursed Blood howls. This ability is really strong, but even more situational than Beast Familiar. I like this ability a lot, and I can really see this kicking certain factions and models right in the teeth. And frankly, this just makes the Cursed Blood even better. I like the Cursed Blood a lot already, but this ability really elevates it to the next level of usefulness. Having great stats, great movement, great bulk, in addition to having a very strong utility ability on a double, very nice. So our doubles have been rather situational, so let's look at our triples and see how they change things up, with our first triple being Magisterial Poise, and this can only be used by the Askurgan Exemplar. It reads, a fighter can only use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the attack's characteristics of melee attack actions made by visible friendly fighters whilst they are within 8 inches of this fighter. This is an outstanding ability. If you haven't guessed yet, I love the Eskagan Exemplar already. It's my favourite model in this warband and this ability makes that model even more potent. Whilst the buff doesn't buff the Exemplar himself, it does buff the rest of your warband and this is very important because as I've already discussed, their attack values are on the low side. Not anymore, this shows up that weakness across the board and does so very easily thanks to the crushing kill potential of the Exemplar. And to top all that off, range 8 on the effect is amazing too, covering a large portion of the tabletop with a very powerful buff. And you no, know, one last little thing, you can combine this with Onslaught and then that is functionally giving one model plus four attacks if they attack twice that turn. Unbelievably powerful, so much damage and covers all of your weaknesses. And then our final triple is Perfect Strike and this can be used by the Exemplar and both forms of the Ascetic. It reads, until the end of this fighter's activation, Attack actions made by this fighter score a critical hit on a 5+. I was ready to write this off as a as nonsense. Then I reread the ability. Unlike many crit boosting abilities, this doesn't apply to just the next attack action. It applies to all attack actions made until the end of the activation. This is very important and turns out from being an underwhelming ability to one that is shockingly tempting to run. This can be used, as I've already mentioned, by the Exemplar and both of your Ascetics, aka your best fighters. Of the two, the Ascetics like this far more and prefer to have an attack buff from Magisterial Poise to give them that extra bump in attacks. This can give you a lot of burst potential, reliably netting you 10 damage activations, a key threshold to cross. The downside is that the Ascetic with Howling Glaive benefits from this ability far more than any other unit. And that version of the Ascetic is, in my opinion, the worst. You could consider bringing that one Howling Glaive just to make use of this, and honestly, you probably wouldn't be wrong. The Howling Glaive isn't bad, it's just that the mace tends to be better. The fact this ability is making a very strong claim for diversifying your ascetics and bringing one glaive and not just rocking it with two maces should tell you how interesting and effective this ability can be. It also gives you some more visual variety on the board too, which I am all for. So this is a very nice ability that's really managed to tip my opinion toward bringing you know, that Howling Glaive, the weapon I wasn't a big fan of at first glance. This ability changes that, and I like that a lot. And then we finish off with our quad, which is Worthy Foes, and this can be used by your Exemplar, both Ascetics and both Acolytes. The only things that can't use this are your Pariah and your Curse Blood. And the text reads, until the end of this fighter's activation, 
add two to this fighter's move characteristic and attack characteristic of melee attack actions made by this fighter. Wow. I'm <laughs> just wow, what an ability. Uh, this is really good. I'll get this out of the way first. Rampage can be better than this, but Rampage does have limitations. So use Rampage when it's better and then use this when it's not. Bish bash bosh, we get that out of the way straight away. So worthy foes, this thing can be used by most of your most of your warband, and most of them can make good use of the buff. But look, the guy who wants this buff above anybody else is the exemplar, okay? The maths is so slanted in this guy's favour, it's not even funny. We're talking about an average damage output of a 2 attack action turn of 30 damage, okay? 30. What can this kill? Every infantry and infantry based leader in the game will die. It can kill Dragon Ogres, it can kill Bulgore, it can kill a Spheranx, it will probably kill the Myrmidon, and the Crusher and the Centaurian Marshal are pushed so close to the near death zone that it outright kills them anyway if you get even a small spike. If you don't put on your exemplar, then you've got other things to do though, and the Channel Mace is swinging for a roughly 18 damage turn, which kills elite infantry easily. Your flail, that low damage range 3 weapon, now gets bumped up all the way to damage 12 on comparable chaff. On the rare instances, you pop worthy foes and magisterial poise in one turn. You know that channel maze from before? That goes to 22 damage on average. That swing will kill most leaders. Just outright slaughter them, including opposing Escursion Exemplars for that matter. Worthy Foes is a terrifying prospect when it comes to damage output, and I haven't even talked about the movement benefits. Every model can use this as buff to movement 7, which is stupid high for infantry and lets you get around the board and do all kinds of shenanigans. I love Worthy Foes, and every time I've popped it on a Charnel Mace, or an exemplar, it has been hilariously destructive, brutally effective, always grade A amazing. In conclusion for the abilities, I love this selection, okay? I like every single ability on offer, I like how reliable they are, as none of them are reliant on RNG, and they all do work in the right situation. The gaps in the Askurgan stat lines are filled and you're left with a brutally effective warband if they have support, which can lead to you having some pretty weak turns when you don't have the fuel to pump your dudes up. It gives them this nice ebb and flow in battle, but even then, due to their high combat stats, they tend to do well without abilities. So they aren't as crippled as, say, the Chaos Legionnaires, who I still think are one of the worst modern Warcry factions. I am happy to see lessons seem to have been learned during their design, and all future warbands are benefiting from that. But it's time to do some list crafting, and right off the bat, I just want to say I am going to do one list. I am not all that well versed in the Death Grand Alliance, and frankly, when I did look through their available models for allies, I was not impressed with any of them. At least not enough to add to the Escargan True Blades. Take that as a compliment to how much I like this warband as is and how much I think this warband just works by itself. It doesn't need additional guys. Whereas I would say the the counterpoint to this faction, the Claws of Karanak, actually benefit greatly from allies. These guys don't. So let's go over how I would build them, okay? So leader, exemplar. He's the only choice, you need the exemplar. Fighter. Pariah, Curseblood, these are obviously being in here, they have no options, they go in there. Next we have some options, and I would take an Ascetic with Charnel Mace and an Ascetic with Howling Glaive. This gives you excellent coverage in terms of range, damage, visual variety, and access to the um, Perfect Strike ability, which I think works best on the Howling Glaive. And then finally we have three Acolytes with Throat Takers, because Acolytes with Throat Takers are my preferred form of taking them. That range 3 is too nice. And this comes to exactly 1000 points on your Vampiric Schnoz. Now, if you wanted to make some changes, you could take a Falchion 
And if you were to take one, I would consider only taking the one. If you were to take more than one, I think you'd actually start to impact the list's effectiveness. I would consider one because the Falchion went buffed with bonus attacks from the Majesty of Pose and in a pinch worthy four does pull away from the Throat Taker in terms of damage quite substantially. However, it also it's also worth knowing as a counterpoint that there are better units to use Worthy Force on specifically, so that substantial increase is not likely to be seen in-game at all. So this is the list, I like it a lot, it's managed to pull some pretty clutch wins. But that's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, thanks for watching, you absolute legends. Please remember to leave a comment, hit the like button and subscribe. If you've seen any mistakes in this video or have some insights in how the Askurgan True Blades could be run, then please leave a comment. I will pin that comment or make a pinned comment crediting yourself because these guys are fresh off the press. These are brand new and sometimes you make mistakes. I've tried to grind as many games as I possibly can to get this video out as soon as possible. So mistakes may, may have been made somewhere. You let me know. I'll make that correction. But overall, man, Askurgan True Blades excellent and i think i should just finish off by asking the simple question who do you prefer the Askurgan true blades or the claws of karanak because you know I i'm leaning towards the spooky vampires i really am these guys are a lot of fun i had a lot of fun playing both factions but these guys might just be a a like a forever faction that i bring to the table more often than some of my other favorite factions very very nice but until next time I'll catch you all later. Ta-ra.